Welcome along to part three of our video tutorial series where we're learning how to create Flappy Bird using Python code. In our previous videos, we got as far as this. Okay, so we have a little Flappy Bird who can flap his way up and down by pressing the mouse buttons. If he hits the bottom of the screen or the top of the screen, then it is game over. And you can click your mouse if you want to play again. What we want to do in this video is get the green pipes into the game which are the obstacles that the bird needs to avoid they will be moving from right to left across the screen with a little gap in the middle for the bird to fly through okay and the user has to just navigate the bird through those gaps to earn themselves points okay so let's get started on bringing these pipes into the game if you look in your images folder i've just got to open mine up actually you'll see inside the images folder two pipes we've got the bottom and the top pipe so we need to bring both of those in just like we usually do with other images um, so I'm gonna head up to the top of my code put in a comment that says pipes um, I need two pipes so I'll call the top one top pipe and the bottom one bottom pipe and I'll put an underscore between the words because you can't have spaces in these variable names so the top pipe is going to be equal to actor, and then in brackets and quotation marks, I'll write top, that's the name of the image we're using, whoops, and the bottom one was called bottom, as you can see here and here. Okay, once you've got those, whoops, I forgot to write the word actor there, once you've got those um, actors or images attached to the variables, we can then set them up in their starting positions. So, I'm going to write top pipe dot x equals, and top pipe dot y equals now for the x-axis which is the horizontal one I want the top pipe to start on the right hand side of the page so we know the right hand side of the page would be 640 that's the width of the page so you could write 640 or you could write the word width it's up to you I'm just going to leave it as 640 and for the Y value, it's the uh, vertical axis that runs up and down. I'm going to set my Y value to minus 100. So it moves the pipe up a little bit higher than the top of the page. So we just can't see the end of the pipe. Now for the bottom pipe to work, um, I'm going to just leave a gap there. I'm going to write the X value in first. So bottom pipe.x, I want it to be exactly the same as the top pipe. So the X value <clears throat> for the top pipe and the bottom pipe is going to be 640. Both of them starting in the exact same position on the X axis over on the right hand side of the page. For the Y value though, what we need to do is we need to make a gap between the top pipe and the bottom pipe. So to do that, I'm going to make a variable called gap. And you need to choose the size of your gap. I'm going to go maybe 100 to start with. We will adjust that later on. Um, and now that we've got this gap size determined, we can write in the bottom pipe dot y. And what we need to put here is the height of the top pipe. So we can actually write in top pipe dot height. That determines the height of the top pipe. And then we add on the gap. And that makes a gap between the top pipe and the bottom pipe. And that sticks our bottom pipe 100 pixels below the top pipe. Okay, a little bit confusing, I know, but as long as you've got that little gap in there, our pipes should be separate from one another. Now, to test that out to see if they actually are in the right position, we will need to draw them on the page. So head on down to your draw function at the bottom. And we only want the pipes to appear if the bird is alive. Okay, so let's add in our two pipes. So we've got the top pipe dot draw and the bottom pipe dot draw. Put them above the other two um, images there. That should draw the pipes on the screen. Okay. So hopefully you saw them over there. They had a nice little gap between them of 100 pixels and they were positioned on that 640, which is the edge of the page. So that is looking pretty sweet. The next thing we might do is get them moving across the page. Now to get them moving across the page, we need to set up one more game variable here. So back up the top where we've got the game variables. I'm going to call it scroll speed. And that's how fast our pipes are going to be moving across the page. If we want them moving left 
along the page, then we need to set it as a negative number. So it moves left on the X axis. I might even put a comment in after this saying speed at which the pipes move across the screen. Okay. So now that we set that scroll speed, we can actually go down to our update function and get them moving. So I'm going to come in beneath uh, the stuff we wrote a bit earlier about the birds. Put in a comment that says scroll the pipes across the screen. And it's quite simple. We're just playing with the X axis here. Okay, so all we're doing is playing with the X posi position of the top pipe first of all. It's going to equal top pipe dot X plus the scroll speed. Okay, so it looks at its current X position, so its current position on the X axis, which we know is 640 to start with, and then it adds that scroll speed to it. Now the scroll speed was minus 4, so it's actually going to be 640 minus 4, and that repeats constantly throughout our game to move our pipes. Okay, so that's the top one moving nicely. Let's get the bottom one going the same way. So bottom pipe dot x equals bottom pipe dot x. So it takes its current x position plus the scroll speed. So we want them moving at exactly the same speed at the same time, and that way we get both pipes coming across the screen at the same time. Now they only come across once, that's okay, we haven't got them um, resetting themselves yet which we'll do in just a moment. I just want to tidy up these two lines of code we put in. Um, you should know by now that there's a quicker way to write this. We don't need to repeat toppipe.x twice there. We can just do toppipe.x plus equals scroll speed. Same with the bottom pipe. You can just do bottom pipe.x plus equals scroll speed. That's a better way to write that line of code. Alright, so we've got the pipes coming across the screen. The next step is, once they hit that left-hand side of the screen, we want them to reset themselves over on the right-hand side. Okay, so that will be become an if statement. So I'm going to put in a hashtag here, so a comment that says, when the pipes hit the left side of the page. In fact, they'll just go a little bit off the left hand side of the page and then they'll reset themselves. It'll just make for a smoother transition. So we need to make an if statement here. And we're only going to look at the top pipe's x value. So if the top pipe's x value is less than minus 50, what do we want to do? Okay, so we know that the top pipe and the bottom pipe are moving at the same speed in the exact same location on the x-axis, so I only need to write in the top pipe here instead of writing both. So once we hit the left hand side of the page, we want our pipes to go back to the right hand side of the page and respawn basically. But I also want them to respawn in slightly different locations each time so that the um, pipes move up and down a little bit just to make the game a bit more challenging. So to do that, I'm going to need to make a new variable um, that moves our pipes up and down a little bit on the Y axis. So I might call that variable offset. You can call it whatever you want, but I'll call it offset. And that offset is going to be equal to a random number on the y-axis. Um, so usually we would write rand int in this case, and we'd put a couple of numbers in that um, the computer can choose from. But because we're going to be dealing with negative numbers, the rand int function won't work properly. So what we need to do is use the word uniform instead. So random.uniform. And we're going to get the computer to pick any number between minus 100 and minus 200. Okay, that's um, going to be for the Y value on the top pipe. Um, so that's the offset variable set up. Now we can position our pipes back on the right hand side of the page. So let's do top pipe dot. Now we could do top pipe dot X. Um, but I'm going to show you another way we can get them over there. I'm going to write top pipe dot mid left and what I'm going to do is write in the width of the page what was that 640 and for the y value it's just the offset so that random number between minus 100 and minus 200 um, now from here actually I've just made a little mistake I'd better fix up quickly you just need to write in um, the equal sign here so top pipe dot mid left equals and then have 
the width of the page, 640, and the offset. Okay, so that's the X value, that's the Y value. Let's do the, well, actually, let's test it before we do the bottom one, just to see if that's working. Okay, so the top pipe seems to be coming back through at different heights each time. That worked pretty well. Let's try the bottom pipe dot mid left. We'll set that equal to 640 as well on the x-axis, so it starts in the same position as the top pipe. And this time we will choose offset again, so any number between minus 100 and minus 200, but we also need to cater for the gap between the two pipes. So you need to put in a similar code to what we put a little bit earlier, so top pipe dot height plus the gap. And that should get our bottom pipe resetting over on the other side of the screen. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So we've now got our pipes um, resetting themselves over there. That gap I noticed was getting quite small after the first run. I might make it about 120. Just leave it at that for now. Um, next step is what happens if the bird collides with those pipes? At the moment, nothing happens. So let's put in a comment here. And we'll say end the game if the bird collides with the pipes and it's going to be another if statement here to get this one working so if the bird dot collide rect remember that um, little function collide rect is used if we were going to collide with something so if we collide with the top pipe or if we collide with the bottom pipe then what do we want to do well first up Let's change the bird.alive to equal false. That just says that our bird has died. And we'll play a sound. Now I've got a different sound for when he dies this time. It's going to be the hit sound, like he's hit a post. So it'll be sounds.hit.play. Okay. Now this will sort of work. Let's just test it and see what happens. So he can fly along. He can fly through the pipes. But if he hits one... Okay, you would have heard a couple of noises then. Um, and the reason that you're hearing noises is because the pipes are still moving across the screen. So what we need to do down the very bottom of our code, where it says what happens when the bird crashes, okay, so if he crashes into the pipes, then we need to tell those pipes to stop moving across the screen. So we'll put top pipe um, dot x and set that equal to, oh, let's say 640 again, just back to its start position. And bottom pipe dot x will equal 640 as well, back to its start position. Um, and that should prevent that sound from repeating itself. Let's just try that again. Okay, that works better. Now I notice one issue, this score up here actually goes behind the green pipes when it's running. Now we don't want that. Have a look. I want it on top of the green pipes. Okay, so to fix that, it's an easy fix. Up here is where the score is drawn. So you can see the word score there. I'm going to highlight that line of code and cut it out by pressing Control X. And I'm going to move it below everything else. It doesn't go in the if else statement. It needs to go outside of it. So make sure it's not indented with the other stuff. And that should just leave the score there the whole time and put it over the top of the pipes. Yeah, that was working. Anyway, not very good at Flappy Bird, but you get the idea. Um, so apart from that, I think we have pretty much got our pipes uh, working. We're not getting a score yet. That's going to come in a future video, but our pipes move across the screen pretty nicely. We've got a gap. That seems to, not much, but it seems to move up and down a little bit as the game progresses, just to make it a little bit hard for the player to play. Okay, um, that is all good, so I might cut the video here, and we'll come back in the next one, and we'll start to look at how to polish off our game with like a score, and how to reset it properly. There's a few little glitches there I want to tidy up, so we'll have a look at that in the next video.